our viewing audience, what is what is relapse prevention? How does that work? So, um, relapse prevention was is an approach created by Dr. Alan Marlat, who's at the University of Washington. And um, when I sort of talk about, uh, when I teach, I teach about the history of addiction treatment. I kind of talk about a series of revolutions that take place throughout the 20th century. The first being Alcoholics Anonymous, where we kind of see a psychospiritual approach. The second one being the therapeutic communities in the 1950s, where you see kind of a different kind of a social approach to treatment. The third one being uh, methadone in the 60s, where we see biology and medicine take place. The fourth one actually was contingency management, but that won't in the late 60s, but actually doesn't come into, into play into the 80s, although it starts there, which is a behavioral approach. But with relapse prevention, we see a cognitive behavioral approach and really the introduction of a psychological approach to treatment. And Alan Marlat, um, you know, just revolutionized the field with this model. And basically what he did was, most people had been traditionally worried about, you know, can I, this person's using drugs, can I get them into treatment, and can I get them to stop? And that, understandably, understandably, if you're a family member or a loved one, you know, they're out of control, they're shooting up, they're drinking, they're getting high, you want them into treatment, thank, thank God, you know, thank goodness, finally it's stopping. Excuse me. But, tragically, we found that we looked at the data, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months out, almost all of those people had gone back to use, which was demoralizing to the patients, demoralizing to the staff, and demoralizing to family members, you know, in the sense that this just doesn't work, this treatment doesn't work, and it's hopeless. And, um, and I think there's a line in a um, big book you probably know, uh, Alcohol is Cunning, Baffling, and Mysterious, something like that. Powerful. Powerful. So, but this idea of, of alcoholism as a mysterious force, it was very interesting, and you know, uh, things with Bill W. writing about that. But what Marlatt did was he said, let me look at this process of relapsing. When people go from being sober, go from being abstinent, what happens when they go back to use it? And he found, in fact, that it wasn't this random phenomenon, that actually there were clear patterns, you know, and that people went back for a whole series of pretty identifiable reasons. You could research them, you could study them. The same things kept coming up over and over again. And this led him to begin to understand that <clears throat> we need to empower people in some ways to understand, become like what they say in, uh, in CBT, personal scientists. Can I understand my pattern of use? Can I understand risks, you know, high risk situations, low risk situations? Can I understand a trigger? Can I understand an urge? Can I understand a craving? Can I understand that there is some pattern to these things It's not random? I mean, some people say it's not a willpower model. I think it is a willpower model, personally, that you have to have a lot of will to do it, but it's not. It's also a science model. So you need to understand your pattern of use. And in many cases, you need to have some skills. So that is, if your friends say, come on, let's go to the bar, you have to be able to say no and dig in your heels and say no. That's difficult for people. You know, they feel badly saying no to their friends. They have to know that's going to be a high-risk situation. They have to recognize, I've just been triggered. They have to know, right now I need some social support, or I need to do distraction. Andrew Tatarski, I'm sure, talked to you about urge surfing, you know, which is you know, when the, you feel a craving, you feel a strong urge to get high. But Marlat pointed out that if we study those things, they usually last 20 minutes. And kind of in a meditative way, can we just breathe through them? Can we just observe them? Can we be with them? Can we sit with these feelings, just ride them out, and they will go away? right? But that's something most people don't know, and that's kind of a skill. Also, kind of, you know, he also pointed out the importance of conditioning it, that, that we can walk by something that was associated with the drug use and not even be aware of it and suddenly get a craving. Right? And that because people tend to, tend to misinterpret it and say, oh, I'm getting a craving, that means I'm not serious about my recovery. Versus going, oh, I was just like Pavlov's dog, I was just triggered by something in my environment. Remember, I had a, a supervisor who had been in recovery from heroin addiction for 20 years, and he said, it was interesting, he said, when I smell the, the sulfur of a match that was just lit, he said, I still get the taste of heroin, even 20 years later. You know, how powerful, you know, we're now we're seeing this also in brain studies. So Marlat took the science and created a therapy, empowered us. I mean, in some ways, you know, so you have these patients come in. Now, relapses are always dangerous, but essentially, you know there's going to be a relapse, but now relapse became interesting. Because like, oh, now is an opportunity to learn something. 
we can figure something out. Rather than a failure, it was an expected, if dangerous, phenomena. Now we can, you know, what he called, sort of falling backwards, falling forwards. Take that information, use it in a productive way, not make the mistake the next time. And that, and often, as everybody will say, we learn through our mistakes. But that was an impossible thing to do in the old days because a mistake was a moral failure. Right, so this, it was, it was such a radical transformation, it's hard. Now it's so mainstream, it's hard to understand, I think. Um, it was just a revolution in the way we saw the world, you know, as those things are. I mean, I, I stumbled upon him and he published his book in 85, I came across it in 89 or 88. And I was like, oh my gosh, this guy, when people read the big book and they go, oh my gosh, this is the answer. I read Relapse Prevention, I went, oh my gosh, this is the answer. This guy understands this and he, you know, he's done research and he's done clinical work. So, tour de force psychology.